YG Entertainment has suffered some major setbacks this year, but the biggest one seems to be failing to renew the individual contracts with Blackpink members. While the members are going to continue their group activities under the agency, their solo schedules will be handled by other companies, and as we know, Blackpink are notoriously known for having strong solo fan bases. This makes us wonder how YG failed to make the members stay, and as it turns out, there's a lot to unpack. YG Entertainment's influence in the industry has severely declined these past few years. The company used to have many successful groups and idols in the music industry, but lately the company has depended mostly on Blackpink and G-Dragon to maintain its position and success. Knowing this, you'd think the company would treat their most profitable artists much better by giving them lots of comebacks and schedules to generate more money, but that wasn't the case. In fact, Blackpink was notorious for having very few releases, which was bizarre for a group with their success and popularity. When they debuted back in 2016, their release schedule was pretty normal for a rookie group. Even though it was disappointing that they debuted with a single album rather than a mini album like other YG groups, fans were hoping that they'd release more songs in the future as soon as they'd built a name for themselves. However, the older they got, the fewer comebacks they had, and it became a norm for them to release music once a year at most. These comebacks always come with a limited number of songs that aren't promoted properly and empty promises of more music. Although the members have very little control over their music releases, it casts a bad light on them. Now, seeing as the group never had many comebacks, you'd think that the members were doing other activities related to music, but that wasn't the case either. It took four years for Blackpink to release their first full album. Because of how disappointing everything had been until then, fans were hoping that the album would turn things around. Maybe if the album and the tour were successful, YG would open their eyes and realize that you get a group like Blackpink once in a lifetime. They had a grip on the idol industry, were venturing into acting and fashion, and were becoming a group that's synonymous with K-pop. Yet, this so-called full album only had eight tracks and fans had already heard two. They released another full album in 2022, and even though fans had been waiting for a long time for it, they were ultimately disappointed by it. They couldn't believe that they'd waited two years for an album with only eight songs, which sounded like most Blackpink releases. To make matters even more disappointing, there wasn't much promotion for the comeback either, so fans were once again left with nothing. The Born Pink tour was successful, but it revealed something people hadn't considered before. The girls might be tired of being under YG. They had grown rusty from all the inactivity and were pushed into going on a tour with non-stop performances for a year. It wasn't like they hadn't shown how unhappy they were with the company either. In fact, they were pretty vocal about how dissatisfied they were with the lack of songs they had, the pushed comebacks, and songs and projects that never saw the light of day. It was probably a marketing strategy, so the girls would seem exclusive, and the fans would be desperate and buy more whenever something new came out, but it was backfiring on them on comical levels. So when their contracts expired, everyone was aware to some degree that the girls would either negotiate better terms for themselves or just get out of the company altogether. The first reason might be why the discussions between the Blackpink members and YG lasted for so long. Even though their seven-year-long contracts were up in August, the agency stated that they were waiting for the girls to finish touring before making a decision. Even though nothing was confirmed, people believed from the start that Lisa wouldn't be renewing. It was long rumored that she got less favorable contracts than her fellow members and that she'd been unhappy with the terms for a while now, especially since she was one of the most popular members of the group. So once the contracts were up, there were multiple speculations and reports that she turned down YG's lucrative offers, one of them being worth a whopping 50 billion won. These were all rumors, of course, but YG's investors started getting scared that the girls might not stay, and the company's stock started dropping like crazy. With the group being as famous as it is, there was a lot of gossip about what was happening. Some said that Rose had stayed with YG after negotiating a better contract, while the other three couldn't agree. Others said that Jennie was heading to Hybe labels because of her rumored relationship with BTS's Young and that Jisoo would join SM subdivision SM actors and focus on her acting career. One thing was sure though, no matter who stayed or left, Lisa was getting out of there. While the two parties were still in discussion, Lisa kept breaking records and getting booked for new activities, which would make it harder for YG to offer her something good enough to keep her there. She knew how much she was worth, so it seems like two solo songs and a comeback in two years wasn't gonna cut it. To save face and their stocks from dropping further, YG was purposefully vague about how the discussions were going. Whenever a new article would drop about what the members were planning to do, YG would neither deny nor confirm, 
just say that discussions were underway. Then it got even more obvious that the girls would be leaving. Lisa took part in a crazy horse cabaret show in Paris, something she never would have been able to do if she was under YG, and when she traveled there, she wasn't accompanied by any YG staff. Rose was also seen with the CEO of Columbia Records, starting speculations that she might sign with a Western company after leaving YG. After months and months of no news and updates from the company, they finally came out with the statement that everyone was waiting for. The four Blackpink members had renewed their group contract with YG. At the time, YG claimed that they were still discussing the status of their individual contracts, but it's pretty clear that by that time, they already knew that the members were leaving the company as Jenny had already set up her own agency a month earlier. Before YG could say anything about whether they still had the members or not, Jenny announced the launch of her agency, Odd Atelier, which meant that she was out for good. Her managers had also left YG and joined her at her new company. It was said that this poured all of YG's efforts to secure good contracts with the members in the drain. The company had no other choice but to announce that none of the girls would be continuing their individual activities with them, and all we can say is, good for them. The truth is that their talent was being wasted at YG. Rather than making music, performing, and promoting as idols, the girls were stuck having limited comebacks like they weren't the biggest girl group in the world. It would be okay if the members wanted to do other things, but they'd continuously expressed how unhappy they were with the lack of songs they had. It was obvious that being in YG was holding them back, so it was no wonder why they decided to leave the first chance they got. However, this now makes us curious about what the girls were going to do. Jisoo's case, for example, is pretty confusing. Out of all the members, she seems the least interested in being an idol, so now that she can do whatever she wants, many are speculating that she might continue her career as an actress. She had the lead role in Snowdrop and a small cameo in Dr. Chan and Lost Talisman, and there have been talks about her being offered other roles recently, so we won't be surprised if she starts pursuing her career more seriously. When it comes to Jenny, now she has her own company, which gives her the freedom to do anything, whether that's related to music or not. She has basically done everything at this point, fashion, acting, the collaborations with Gentle Monster and Porsche, and now her company, so she'll probably get really experimental with it. It could mean releasing music or a fashion line or something else entirely. She also has all the necessary connections in the West and Korea, so we're excited to see what she offers in her new role. Rose was the only member who was said to stay under YG, so now that she has left, everyone eagerly awaits her next move. She could go in Jenny's route and open her own company so she can release as much music as she would like. She could also sign with a non-Big 3 company so she wouldn't have to deal with the management stuff and still have a lot of freedom regarding the music she releases. The third option is that she signs with a Western company rather than a Korean one. As mentioned, she was seen with the CEO of Columbia Records and the CEO of Spotify, and all the songs she released were in English, so it could definitely be a possibility. Lisa is the one who had the most rumors regarding her career outside of Blackpink. There were lots of articles about what company had offered how much money, but as of December 30th, nothing has been confirmed. It's doubtful that she will focus her promotions on Korea, or that she'll even continue being an idol, seeing as her two recent schedules were overseas. However, it seems that she will probably focus on dancing and performing from now on. Of course, we hope to see her as an idol again, but the chances of that happening are small. Whatever happens with the girls, we can all agree that they'll receive a lot of support and make better decisions for their careers than YG ever could. We can't wait to see what happens, so make sure to stay tuned for more updates. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.